before solving uh, more problems, I'm going to generalize what I did uh, in the previous class. So I start from the big integral, and then I find the formula for this special case. This is a very frequent case that 90% of all times the flow is a serious state. That means you don't have fluctuation change the pattern. And then you have bunch of pressure in the inlets. These are inlets, and you have different pressure in the outlets if they are exposed to the atmosphere. So all of these gauge pressure are zero. Uh, and then you have different velocities, but they have, these have the different pulsations. So this is a very general case. As you can see, this guy has n number of inlet outlets. And in the next uh, meeting, which is one day, I'm going to give something similar to that special case. But instead of starting with the integral formula, you just start with this formula and I'm going to write. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, but we may also have conceptual problem like I give you the big integral and say simplify that for that special case. So you don't solve problems, there is no number crunching, no number substitution. So you just simplify that for it. Now for that, if I start with the uh, momentum, is the one integral, the one velocity is the time derivative of that plus the surface derivative, the surface integral, uh, velocity times v dot n, yes, is equal to sum of external, f external. It's just as I did mention here the second law, and now I want to simplify it for this. First thing, steady state. There is no change in the pattern versus time. So anything with respect to time must go to zero. Right? Now, let's expand this integral. If I expand this integral, I start uh, somewhere in the border, let's just start from this point, either walk clockwise or come clockwise on the border. And when I say the border, I'm talking about this line, here is border. These are the border of the system. As you can see, This is the border of the system. There you go. So if I start from here, go in the car for some purpose, because this is a surface integral. You don't do anything with that body inside. So if I if I'm here all the way on the top, what do I get for the integral? Zero. Why? Because of the the uh -huh. n and the velocity yeah. are perpendicular <coughs> to each other? Yes, that's right. And then the, the dot product is this dot product. Your dot product would be zero. zero. So that's what in VC, if you have velocity here. Even if you have velocity, the normal in this way, dot product is zero. But look, in the actual world, this is this one. So velocity itself is zero. So in both cases, this, this is zero. This integral is zero. Everywhere that you do not have inlet or outlets, all right? Everywhere that you do not have inlet or outlet, this integral is zero. Why? Because the velocity is zero is involved. Or the velocity is normal. If you do in this approximation, the velocity is normal to the outgoing normal. Thank you. So what I'm going to be uh, uh, writing is just integral over this phase. Right? There is a phase here over this phase, over this phase, and here, 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 and so on. You see, this is n number of inlets. It's not just six, it's n, arbitrary. Right? So let's do that. So if I walk here, the first inlet is this guy. So I'm going to write in this integral. So what do I get? I get rho at this four, right? times velocity and force, right? And V dot N, what do I get for V dot N? Positive or negative? Negative. Where is the N? Let, let's draw the N. Oh, wait, wait. That's the duration of pressure. That's the duration of pressure. Yeah. yeah. So then it would be positive. N is this way, right? V is this way. So V dot N is what? Positive. Positive. So it's V 
This prefixes is just positive before and just magnitude of before, whatever it is. But this is a vector before. You see, one of them is just a magnitude called what? You do dot to dot. The output of dot to dot is what? Scalar. But this guy is the vector. So vector times magnitude of before. And it's just positive. You see that? And then after you do the integral, assuming this d4 is constant all over this space, that means this space you have same velocity everywhere. You see that? You have same d4 everywhere. And so it is constant, you just take it out of the integral, all this term, the density, velocity, and so it remains the s for area. Some people call it self s, self s for area, so a4. That's it. Now the next one, I'm, I'm going to explain it because it's just like the same. So I continue, I get zero here, zero here, then I, the next thing I caught is this phase. What should I write for that? The same thing. The same five. thing, but for five. Row five, V five, and this is just a vector, and then the magnitude of V five, which is positive, hence V positive, times A five. So this is plus that. Now continue walking here, and then you cut this guy. Again, you have row n, but this is the n outlet. Row n, dn vector times magnitude of v n a n, and then you continue walking. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing. Here. And then you're going to cut this guy. Now, can you tell me what you are right? Same thing. <coughs> it's all the same thing, it's one. So I'm going to do the same thing, but for one. And it's negative. Why? Because the normal is this way, the velocity is this way. So if you do dot to dot of these two vectors, magnitude of this times magnitude of that, which is one, times the cosine angle. The cosine angle is 180 degrees. <coughs> so you get negative magnitude of V1. So you're going to get row 1, v1 vector, and then negative magnitude v1 times a1. That's it. Continue walking. Walk here. And then you're going to get a2. What's your right? Negative, or basically row 2, v2. Negative magnitude v2 times a2. And finally, the third one, you walk here, and then you cut three, you write row three, V3, magnitude of V3, A3, and then you're back to the start point. So you've done the full surface integral. And this is the surface integral. So this sum must be equal to sum F external. Now, what do I have for external load? Let's temporarily move this off. What do I have for external loads? I have the pressure, right? And I have Fx, Fy, the support. This is the guy that holds this tank. So these are external loads. Now, let's do that. This should be called, now, F external, this guy, I'm going to move on the right hand side. Sum f external is simply, let's just start with this one. You get what? P1, A1, plus P2, A2, plus P3, A3, and then here the pressure goes on the other side. So negative P, N, A, N, negative. P five A five and A P four A four plus F X the supporting ring, right? Which I call this F. So this is basically let's do this. This, this is a vector identity. These forces are only in the x direction, so this is all external in the x, right? Plus fx. Now, 
we solve everything in the x direction. What about y direction? Sum of f external is what? In the y is going to be zero. Terms. It's not zero, no. f y. In this case. But you can see that, you can see that if these y they have angles, these are perfectly there. If they have a little bit angle, you see that? I also get some pressures here. Right? And vice versa. So you get you get the point. Now let's put this all in the one simpler formula. So for this sum, I'm going to write rho i v i right the magnitude of v i times a i sum and then is equal to p i again sum p i a i then plus f reaction. I can write it like that, which should give you, it's gonna give you two vector solutions. One for x, one for y. If you do it in 3D, you're gonna get one for x, one for y, one for z. Now look, at this term, you can write it like this. Group this together, group these three terms together, and you can write it like that. Sum. I write it here, sum m dot i vi is equal to sum p i a i plus f reaction. It's a very general equation. Now, what is that m dot? Look at, look at. This term is rho v a. What was rho v a? Rho density time velocity at area cross section at, at the inlet. That was called m dot, mass flow rate. You remember from continuity chapter? So instead of writing this, which is longer, you could. In fact, some problems you do start with that. And if I were you, I would always start with that and get that. But you could just say, you know what, if you give me mass flow rate, m dot, then I can just put in this equation. And then I can right hand side can just the pressure time area for F external. Now you gotta pay attention. If you only have in the X direction everything is in the X, this is gonna give you this sum of M dot I U. It's not gonna be a vector. Only you get U component of this vector. This is a scalar, right? This is a scalar. This is a vector. So you only get the U component of that is equal to some PUI. A i plus F reaction in the x. So everything is a scalar. Do you see that? If you have in y, then you get v, the v component, the y component of velocity, and here is the F reaction in the y. You see that? And then if you have pressure, like a little bit angle in the x, then you have get, get the y component of P dot A in the y. Now here P dot A is perfectly in the x. So that's it. So this equation, this slide, pay attention to that because I'm going to use this to do more examples now. We have already done a few examples, especially this, this equation. Mm -hmm. 
this is very good. Like that. Right? So here, this m dot is what? Rho v a. Rho magnitude and rho theta a. Now, if you factor, if you put rho is uh, incompressible, that means you have long density everywhere. That means what? You can factor out this row out of this integral, so you're going to have rho sum a b i dot g i is equal to i. Is equal to sum b a plus a. That's sum a. This is a reaction. This is a reaction. Now, this guy is the volume rate, q. This is volume rate. This question is giving you q, volume rate, the amount of volume translating, not the amount of mass, it's the amount of pounds moving, right? And the distance, difference is just for you take the row out. So it gives you that. I can see on the screen here, but I do not see it there. Yeah, that's very weird. Let's do it again. Here we go. Let's turn it on again. We shouldn't have one base of this garbage. Now we should dim the light. Let me dim the light. It's not bright enough. I don't like it. Uh, okay, so you have, uh, you can see that. So it gives you the Q at the at point A and. Obviously, this uh, water is going to branch out into uh, C and A, D, and uh, it says three over four portion of the uh, water goes in the B direction and one fourth of this uh, portion of this Q. So if uh, the amount that goes uh, if 15 divided by four, that's the volume rate goes at C, and then you multiply it by 3 over 4, that's the volume rate goes at D. So it gives you all the volume rates everywhere, and then it say determine x, y, conformal withdrawal force. Exerted from this surface on the water. Okay, assume everything is a steady state, and then it's called red. Now you can uh, pay attention to this uh, red, if I can zoom it here. You see, this red part, is in fact of copper water, but it's in the shape of, you see this red section, is in fact one example of this type of generic copper water. But the outlets and inlets, they have angles. They are not only in the X, they have some angles. So what we can do is just write, again, fiber step system. This system is my control volume here. And then right equations, the first equation is continuity, Bernoulli, and momentum. So far we have done this. So before we actually do anything, we see that uh, if I take a streamline from A all the way to B, right? And if I write Bernoulli equation, that's, that's what I do here. If I write, take that streamline, and if I do Bernoulli equation, then I'm gonna get uh, the fact that Velocity from A is equal to velocity at B. Why? You see, let's write this Bernoulli. It's not easy for I'm going to write it here. If you write Bernoulli for, for a streamline going from here all the way to here, between A and B, what do you get? You get PA plus one half 
of rho d a squared plus rho d d a is equal to for d, the end of it, t d plus one half of rho d d squared plus rho d d d. Now, you see that both these are exposed to the atmosphere at point A. I mean, not inside the pipe. The inside the pipe, the pressure may be a little bit higher. That causes it to push it out, right? But just after, also the pipe, this is in the atmosphere. So the pressure is P0, the atmosphere pressure. Same here. Pressure is what? P0, right? There is, so this is, these are the same. They can go from both sides of the beam. You see that? What about the elevation? We assume that this is very small. Very, very small, like this, this much. So even though there is a dif difference between elevation and Z and A and B, but because it's a small, I can't tell. So what's the conclusion here? Can you tell me what's the conclusion? No, one yeah. half rho BA. Yeah, which is rho the same, one half is here. Then what can I say? BA is equal to BB. Similarly, I can say BA is equal to BC. So by applying Bernoulli equation, you see that the velocity everywhere is same. So then you say, okay, now momentum equation, uh, continuity and momentum. First, let's write uh, momentum equation. Momentum equation, uh, just like uh, this, this equation right here you see on the top, this equation is this equation. And if you go through it, you wish to this equation. That's exactly the equation I had. So you see the one that is going uh, outwards, you see these are the outwards, point B and C. You see, the flow is leaving, and the normal is uh, in the, along the VB. So you do dot for dot, the positive, you see that? So VB, VC, both of them positive. Look, in there, the normal is this way, the velocity going the other way. So it's negative. So this is the term I had on the right hand side. For this explanation, but instead of one, two, three, you have point B, C, A. And then the, the time derivative is zero because what is a steady state. Unless I say this is transient, you always assume that time derivative is zero. And then finally, you go to uh, the external load, right? So here is the thing, the external load, we have, uh, before we do external load, I can group this rho B A, you see rho B B, rho B A. I can take rho out and say V B A B. What's V B A B? Velocity at B. <coughs> Who is there? Who said that? There is no flow rate. It's a Q B. So you can just, it's just grouping. You can group this together and you can see there is a Q B here. And then this is a V B, the vector V B. And this is density. So this equation is just this equation, but written in more useful base for this particular problem. Because this particular problem is giving you the flow rate, you see? 15 liter per second for point A, and then fraction of it for point B. So you have QA, QB, QC. You have all of these, right? So that's it. All you need to do is to show the external. So if you draw a field for that, there's going to be an FX here. You see on this control volume, there is a F. One, one mistake this book has, it's not a mistake, it, it's not good. He doesn't have a, like a full FEV. Sometimes he does, yeah. Um, for the equation that you wrote over there, why did you cancel out the rho G VA rho Because you assume that this is, uh, this height is very small. Now if, if I, if in the test, if I say this is like 20 meters, 20 meters is uh, twice the, height of this building. For that case, the, the rho gz, this term minus this term becomes significant. It's comparable to this heads. They call this heads. But right now, if you, this, this height is just this much. We ignore it. Why? Because if you put it in the equation, even if you go measure it, put it in the equation, that's going to be order of one, since these are order of like 10,000. It really doesn't matter if you put it there. Because you, you, like six digits will change. Your fifth digit will change in the computation. All right, so we have the cues. 
How do we get QA? We have the question giving QA. Give you QA, which is uh, 50 liter per second, and then I'll give you, if you go to the appendix in the test, there is a conversion table. So liter per second, you multiply by 10 to negative 3 to make it cubic, uh, cubic meter per second instead of liter. Everything you put in the equation should be in a size of meter, kilogram, second, newtons. If you have something not in a size unit, you have to convert it. So you have that, and then you multiply that by one fourth to get QC, and then you multiply by three over four to get QE. So this is what you do here. You see that? This is your QA converted to on the right side, converted to meter per Q per second, and then. Uh, from that, you can compute the velocity at A. How do you compute the velocity at A? Well, it's just very easy. You have Q at A, Q at A is according to the definition of VA, AA. Area at A, velocity at A. So VA is just QA divided by AA. You have the QA, you multiply, you divide by the area, he gave you the diameter, and then you have the result, velocity A. And according to what I wrote for Bernoulli equation, that's equal to VB, VC, and everywhere. The same velocity. So you have all these quantities, and you have developed your momentum equation. Now in the test, I may just give you the same thing. All right? And just, just say from this, reach to that. Or from this particular configuration, the start with general integral, and reach to this equation. And then you, have, you need to show me, just like I'll show you how you get that, the concept. You don't solve anything, so it's gonna take maybe four or five minutes. Okay, so I just give you that. Now, here, let's put numbers here. So if you put numbers here, right hand side, you multiply 1,000 volt by QB. Now you have QB, QA, because we have all the velocity here. And you get the sum of external force in X, sum of external force in Y. Now look, here is the thing. You, you may say, what about pressure? Here, you see this, uh, this equation is very general. This equation that is right here, like you can see that under this thing, or here. You may say, what about PA, the pressure and index? Why do you look? Uh, how it should be zero because it goes into the atmosphere. Yeah, because it's exposed to the atmosphere. Now, if I, in the test, if I give you a Example that you have, for example, the nozzle inside the pipe, right? That this part is, yes, exposed to the atmosphere. If, but if I take my control volume like this, you see that? Yeah, here is P0. But here you cannot say P0. It's inside this pipe. There is a pressure there. You see, you have, you have heard this word pressurized uh, container. There is a pressure difference. They may be accidentally same if you don't have any flow, but when you have flow, they're, they're different. So that's the reason you don't have pressure here. All you do, you just have contribution from this term, right? And you get external reaction in part to keep the water in place. Now, one thing I want to say, when you draw your FDD, there are two ways to do that. This is a very important thing. You need to have lights. There are two ways to draw it to be, and one way is I recommend to do the second way. The first way is just using the actual load. So if somebody wants to draw a PD here, he just put, you see, pressure loads here. He won't just like I did. Let's, let's give you another example. I don't want to eliminate that. Let's say you have just this one load here. Let's say you have a nozzle, <coughs> and this is fixed to the ground, and the flow is coming here, and leaving up, right? And if your control volume is this nozzle, maybe my quarter, if the control volume is, you have to pay attention very to your system in the five step procedure. The system will control volume. If you take the nozzle as a control volume, somebody may draw a FED like this. I'm going to write this. This is approach number one. They just put the actual rear loads. So the rear loads, one load is from here, unknown, F reaction, right? And then if you have different pressure, let's say you have a pump here, 
for example, there is a pump. So the pressure here is a little bit higher than atmospheric pressure. Right? So you put pump pressure here. Why? Because the pressure is a real load, right? These are real load, P pump. And this is obviously atmospheric pressure, I don't write it. So that's your FTD, the actual FTD. They put actual load. But the second approach, this is a pressure approach. The second approach is also put the inertial load on it. The, the forces that come from the fluid acceleration, just like dynamics. We had inertial loads showing on, on FTDs. The forces that are not real. So these are real forces, pressure, reaction in the water. We, in the statics, we also had only real loads. We did not have inertial loads. Why? In vector statics, because everything was in equilibrium. But in dynamics, you have inertial loads, forces that come from acceleration, right? So you put inertial. So the second approach, this is the first approach. The second approach is you take the inertial load and put it on a PD, and you just flip the sign. When you put inertial load on a PD, you have the actual sign, and then you just flip the sign. So he, in, for example, here I have what? I have the actual M dot, this, these are the initial loads, right? M dot dot times V is initially this way. When you put it on FPD, you just flip the sign. You see, there's a little bit dash line. So M dot, one, V one. And here, I know that M dot V is this way, right? So just flip the sign. M dot V here, point two, let's say this two, one. M dot V, V two. These are the initial loads. So you put initial load on the FTD. Now, here is the thing. Uh, I'm sorry, this should have, you should have flipped on this initially, this way, this way, and then you flip it this way. And dot one, and one. Now, when you have this FTD, you just treat it like vector static form. You say, I sum everything I see on FTD is equal to I see, I sum everything I see observed on FTD in my equilibrium condition. So in this case, you just sum this. You see P, and then you have a negative M dot two plus positive M dot two, which gives you this sum, sum of pressure plus external reaction gives you zero. What's the advantage of the second one when you put inertial loads on the PD compared to when you don't put the initial loads on the PD? Do you know what the advantage is? Yeah. Another advantage is when the problem size gets larger, for example, the next course is uh, machine uh, dynamic or kinematic or uh, dynamics of machinery. Then you have maybe like 12 gears, 20 gears. They are just hooked up together and this rotate this way, this one goes this way. So you have all sort of not only interaction between gears, the physical loads like F or P, but also because the gear they rotate, they have dynamic inertial loads from rotation and movement, the inertial loads. If you don't put inertial loads like this per gear, you most likely end up with the wrong system of equation. You can't just say, well, when I write the equation, I'm gonna add it just like I did here. But trust me, when you write, you have so many gears, you forget some terms. The acceleration terms, the angular acceleration terms, there are so many inertial things. So it's better to get a habit of putting inertial loads on your PD. How do you do that? You know the initial direction of this? Just flip the sun and put it on your PD. Then solve the equilibrium problem, a static problem. Now, if everything you force it, you see here, the sum must be zero, which is this equation. Now, in this case, he doesn't put inertial loads here. If he wanted to put inertial load here, well, look, there is an dot V this way, right? When you put it on FPD, you put it the opposite way, you dash. There is another M dot V here, right? When you put it on FPD, you put it the opposite way, and there is another end of B. Here, going this way, it goes that way, and then when you put it on a P, you flip the sign, this way. And then you have three initial loads, 
then you can consider like vector aesthetics problem. You don't need to know this equation anymore. Yeah, you, you say I, I see all my forces, including real and initial, I just sum them up. They must be zero. All right, uh, <coughs> next problem, we have this uh, gate that we had before. If we're not done yet, I see people are trying to wrap up. They still have 10, more than 10 minutes. So, uh, we have a gate, and this gate is opened up. So imagine this is the, we had a problem, dam, uh, dam break in the, I, I, I don't think it was meter one. It was one of the homework problems. We had a mechanism to keep that gate in place. So now this is considered the gate is open, right? The gate, if the gate is open, what happens to this fluid? It's gonna go accelerate, go behind it, right? Now the question is, uh, how much the velocity is at B, and how much velocity is at H, and what particular question is asking is to find the load required to keep this gate at place, right? So if I want to uh, keep, find the load that is required to keep this gate at place, it's better to take the control volume just like that, the red one. Let me do that. So if you take this as your system and control volume, then the next step is to draw a PD, which is that. Now in this case, you see that the forces on this face of, uh, you see loop over faces, just like we need to make this heavy charge. <coughs> You have a force coming this way, right? And this force is not same, it's not uniform. Why? Why the pressure force here is not uniform? Because we have depth, right? And it's five meter, it's not small. If this was five centimeter, I would say just, you see, you will see that triangular load, but just make it constant, approximately constant load. You see that? But you really have to start from zero gauge and you go all the way to the bottom of the uh, so you have uh, a triangular load here. Another load you have is the weight of this column, which you cannot replace it because it's five meters. Right? You don't have to Another load you have is the force coming from the gate. So the, this force that you compute on the gate, the action and reaction, the opposite of that, goes over the control volume. Do you see that? And finally, the force coming the pressure here, uh, distribution at the inside the water here is going to be. And then finally, the last force is the force coming from the bottom of the river, which is N going up. Now, I want to do a quiz over here. What is missing here? What, what on that video? There are two major things that are missing. Forget about inertial force right now. Inertial, yeah, initial load is one, one of them. So in fact, you should have here in the inlet, you, you have dot, 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 and then it's M dot at A, B, A, and the opposite direction. And here you have dot, 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 like that, and dot at B, 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 right? Well, he doesn't put initial load on the PD, which is, I mean, he put it in the equation. When he writes the equation, he put it in the equation. What is physically missing? Because this is approximation. What's the physical? Imagine you have this water filled up behind this gate, and you open this gate, and the water is going to flow like that. What is missing from the PD? Can you tell me? Where? In what direction? Where and what direction? I'm pushing against the ground. It's coming out. That's one of them. Who is where? The other one? Yeah. 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 So, what's the direction of friction? If I want to put it on FPD? Up and left. Up on the gate. Yes. So, there is one here, right? It goes to the left on the bottom, and one goes here because the water is coming down. So we don't have it on FPD, why? Because so far, you remember when I write this uh, F external, this we said we don't, right now in this chapter we don't talk about shear stress, viscosity, but we will, hopefully soon, maybe next week. So right now we don't, we assume that that's approximation. Another thing, if uh, this area is very small and this point is too high, if the flow goes like this, right? What can I say physically? This height will go down, right? But very, very slowly. 
we agree with that the approximation. These are approximation. So the results you get here are not accurate because you make approximation. So with that said, I can say this control volume is what? The state is same. The state is zero. But if the height is going so rapidly down, can I do this zero? Yeah. No. This, this can be a conceptual quiz next month. <coughs> I mean, we're going to have conceptual, not quiz, conceptual questions in this. I make two questions, but one of them is probably two, two parts. And most of them are conceptual. But explain. Now, uh, okay, all I need to do is find a G on this FD, right? That's what I, uh, he's asking. So again, I write my equations. Uh, one equation per moly between point one and two. So if you take one string line, you see this blue line here, and go around it, assuming you miss it, there is no head loss, so that's my uh, familiar Bernoulli equation. So at point one, the, the pressure is what? Zero, because the gauge is gauge. You see P1 is exposed, exposed to atmosphere. So zero, but velocity at V1 is not zero. So the in fact, this is the velocity in X, not in Y. In Y is almost zero, in the X. You see this is really long, you start from point here and goes like this, you see that? So the velocity at one, do I have it? No, just to move on and on and on. I have 2G, that's 2 times 981 plus Z1, the elevation at one, which is five meter. Then you go to two. Point two, again, pr pressure is zero, and velocity at B, again, I don't have it on the surface, but I know the pressure is zero, and then two times 981 plus, the height is one. So I get one equation like that, which kind of sucks. If you only have two, <laughs> one equation, two of them. But look, you remember back in said we did five step. I said generate all look at equation before you actually solve it. And this is the third step, write the equation. So we have already done FPD system. Now write the equation. So we are writing the equation. So without wasting time on that, we go to the next equation. Next equation is continuity. So again, this guy is zero, why? Because the height going down very, very slowly, as I said yesterday. So you do that, which is just sum of m dot is zero. The density is constant, take it out, so it's gonna be a times v. All right, so you have v at a times the area at a, which is five times three. And what is that three? Can you tell me what is that three? That's the depth, the depth of this gate, because we look at it 2D, we look at one side. This is the depth of this gate. So the area of here, you see, this is, if you imagine 3D, here this area, it has a depth. This side is three. This side, the height is five. Five times three is the new area. Times V8, why positive negative? Because the normal is going to left, the velocity is going to right. V dot A is what? Negative. So this is inlet. And this is the outlet, again, you see that? One. The area of, to get the area of this is 3D. This is one times the depth. Whatever the depth of this thing is inside the yeah. So this is your second equation. Again, you see two equations, two unknown. VB is equal to 5 VA. The other one, VB squared minus VA squared is equal to 78.3. So now you solve it together, what you get? Two unknowns simultaneously. And you get VA and VB. Now finally, but you don't, you don't solve right now. You go just continue writing all your equation. The last equation is right, momentum equation. Right now we know, so this meter, you write three equations. Continuity equation, Bernoulli equation, momentum equation. You don't write energy equation because you haven't covered it yet. But later on, the final exam, you, you have to also write the energy equation. You have to write all the equations per control volume. If you have two control volume, you get no equation than one control volume. So here, linear momentum, this term immediately is zero. This summation of force in X. And then, this is the term that I said. You see, he didn't put this, these are inertial forces. You see that? He did not put the inertial, do you see my cursor? Mouse cursor? Yeah. So he did not put these inertial loads on FPD. Instead, he adds it manually to the equation which is fine for this simple problem, but for the complicated problem when you have 10 systems, like in the mechanism, uh, uh, total machinery, mechanism of uh, design of mechanism, and design of uh, machine parts, then you have like 10 gearbox. 
if you don't add the initial load, our problem is you will get the wrong answer. Unless you solve a like, very easy problem. Like they, if, if they don't ask you to solve any problem, probably you pass the course. But if they really, if somebody comes here and give you the question in the book and say solve it, if you don't follow, if you don't put inertia load on that feeling, you most likely end up with a wrong result and you fail the test. Just because you don't include it on that feeling. So I recommend, I recommend put it on your feeling, put the inertia load on your feeling. Uh, okay. So here, VB, rho VBA, VB plus AE. This is the this equation, the momentum equation. The inlets are negative. You see, the outlet is positive. And uh, if you put the results here, you get the resultant force in torque group, uh, getting X. So here is the, on top of that, is the initial. The external load or the pressure load, now look at the FPD. The pressure load is not rho GH, it's rho G, it's the area under this triangle. So, so it's one half of the height here is rho GH, which is five times, thousand times constant of gravity. Then you divide by half, that, that's it. Times the area of this surface. So this is the pressure load in the x direction, and then uh, you have another pressure load in the x direction, but negative, going this way. And this again, rho GH, and H here is one, so you have rho, G, H1, and one half, because it's triangle, right? Okay. And then it's negative, you see that? And then the last external load, look at the FPD. The last external load is what? FG, the force coming from the gate. These are sum of forces in the X. This should be equal to what? This sum must be equal to this there, which is the thousand times velocity squared times area minus velocity squared A, which we already have it from solving this new equations, right? Then you put it there, you get the required load is equal to uh, 157 kilonewton. So the force required to keep that is 157 tons metric, not metric, divided by one, 15 metric tons. So a truck, you have two trucks, two truck full load of uh, equipment. That's the same weight of load is applied to the gate. So you really need a heavy duty mechanism to keep it in place. Now, I want to ask you, if we don't have this water going out, you know, I'm making this question, let's assume now, let's assume I, I close the gate, right, and no water is passing out. Do I get more? Do I need more forces to keep it in place or less? If I said more. Huh? If I said more. You need more. Can you tell me how much you need it to keep it in place? We don't have time. It's just 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Would be just the extra meter of water that it has to hold back? Which is? Can you give me numerical value? Let's, let's put this gate back in place and how much force is required to keep it in place? I need five minus four times. The uh, density times gravity. Why five minus four? Um, because you already have the four meters of the gate going up. So. No, no. It's let me bring this gate down. Yeah. Then how much load is that put in this gate? Oh, five, five times three times the width times the density of the water times uh, the last piece I just said that I can't remember. Gravity. <laughs> times gravity. Yeah. So you say this rho GH, rho GH, and this H is from here to here? Yeah. yeah. But look, you get very close. This is the gate, <coughs> right? And the load is going to be like this. Why do you sell it to it? You already have this. Uh, one half of that. One half of this. <laughs> and then if you complete it, it's going to be like 200 something kilometers, and it's way higher than that. Which makes sense. 